Hello viewers, welcome to a reboot of Let's Play slash Cheese Dark Souls. I think I'll just call it Let's Play this time, although I'm probably going to be cheesier than even the previous playthrough. Now, the reason I'm rebooting this is because I lost, well, pretty much everything on my old Xbox hard drive. The Xbox hard drive went bad, so along with all of my other game data, uh, I lost all of my characters in Dark Souls, both my Let's Play character and, well, pretty much all my PvP characters. Now, I've since played offline quite a bit and uh, built up a new PvP character base as well as gotten much better at the game, so I felt like I could really do the game much better justice now than I could the, well, my first go around it trying to do a let's play of it. Am I some pro mode speedrunner yet? No. Am I like an elite tier multiplayer guy? No. But I'm better than before. And I should be able to make the uh, series a bit more entertaining as a result of that. So, rather than picking the Deprived, because I do intend to do some PvP with this after the Let's Play concludes, I actually chose a Warrior. Uh, reason being his stat distribution. Essentially, uh, for most of this Let's Play, I'm going to be building up through Endurance and Vitality. But eventually I might go into another stat, depending. Uh, alternatively, I might just PvP with elemental weapons and, well, <laughs> only leveling what I need to use the weapons at all. Anyway, running by that guy, I chose Black Firebombs as a starting gift. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I had it in my head that I might be using them later for one reason or another, but I didn't really feel like killing the starting boss with them, and that's one of the better uses for it. If you want the Demon's Great Hammer in a regular playthrough, you can only get that by beating that the Asylum Demon before you pick up your weapons like this. And so Black Fire Bombs are really the only way to do that in a fast manner. It's possible to beat the Asylum Demon just by punching him to death or smacking him with your sword hilt, but um, no matter how good you are, that's going to take a while. <laughs> that's going to take a long time. I tried it once. And... Although I was able to prevent him from hitting me at all, like, two or three minutes into it, I'm just like, forget this, we're not doing this. Man, not a, not the best start to my uh, unlocked play there. And yes, unlocked play, you're going to see a lot of unlocked play from me in both this and multiplayer when I get there. I actually haven't recorded multiplayer videos for this build yet, but uh, we'll get there. But I fight unlocked all the time, so it's not going to be a surprise. Alright, so now we take on the Asylum Demon. Nothing really much to say about him. Uh, if you're very new to the game, he might give you problems just because you're getting used to the controls, but this is one of the easier fights in the game. And uh, all the versions of bosses that look like this, you want to fight them unlocked because it lets you run around behind them more easily. You're not, you're not strafing slowly, you can just run around. And they only have a few attacks. This sit-down attack is actually one of the easier ones to deal with. You just kind of walk away and swat them a bunch of times before they can do anything. He also has a big pound attack in front of him and a couple sweeping attacks. If you're behind them, you're pretty much immune to everything they can do. Uh, some of the later versions of that demon have an area of effect attack, but the tells are so slow and so obvious that you really don't have to worry about it. And off we go to Lordran. So, about four minutes since starting the video, a little bit less. I actually have managed to get out of the tutorial area. Not horrible. Speedrunner would do it much faster, but <laughs> whatever. Okay, so this is going to be his way run. Yes, I, I'm going to actually grab and use that weapon uh, for most of the run. A weapon really doesn't matter, and here I want the strength for it, so I'm just going to beat on this guy. <laughs> A little bit early to be fighting him, in fact, there's no reason to ever really fight him. If you don't talk to him, he'll just sit there forever. I may be crashed <laughs> Get kicked. But I'm not yeah, just recently I put out a PvP video, and I use the kick a lot in that. So, why do I kick so much? I mean, because, you know, this is just going to be a parry spam thing, so I don't really need to discuss this particular fight that we're watching on screen in detail. So why um, kick so much? Kicking takes a lot of stamina off the shield, you saw when he kicked me just then. And it also stuns, so it's a if you're playing against a bigger weapon, especially, or a weapon that's slower than your kick speed, 
you can kick with pretty safe impunity because they're going to get stunned if they attack you. And if they don't, their shield is going to block it. And that's going to uh, drain their stamina considerably, which cuts into the number of attacks they can do and the number of blocks they can take. So because of that, the kick is a very powerful option that's underused, and it's one of the reasons I don't like just maining a rapier or a curved sword, because those things give you unique animations that replace the kick that are inferior to it, in my opinion. And it's also good you know, if you get a dead angle kick, like if someone's trying to strafe around for a backstab, I didn't do a very good job of it in that PvP video because I was trying to stab people from the front. But if someone's strafing around, you can very easily um, kick them and then backstab them. <laughs> now that, that's um, probably not a smiled upon tactic, but it is an effective one. And uh, a very common thing in multiplayer PvP is to use something like Force or Wrath of God to stagger somebody as they're run walking by you. And then once they're staggered, you backstab them. And with, especially with Wrath of Gods, which hurts considerably, that's a powerful thing to do. <laughs> You're talking well over a thousand damage with pretty much any weapon. So okay, we have uh, mercilessly slaughtered the Crestfallen Warrior for no reason other than that I wanted a few more souls and you know, I thought it would be fun to do. So see ya, I guess. <laughs> Down here. Uh, pretty much any run that I do, I like coming down here to get the Homeward Bones. You have like a Spiked Club or whatever it is, Morning Star, I think it's called. It's a bad weapon compared to the other hammers, so I don't use it generally. But uh, the Homeward Bones are worth it, and so are the Lord's Talismans, so might as well pick them up. Running past the wing spear here. If you're going a dexterity build, you might consider it. Usually, the other spears are considered more competitively viable, but any spear can be used. <laughs> Spears are a good class. Pick up the binoculars. That's more habit. I didn't really need the binoculars. This way is what I came here for. Uh, binoculars can be aimed. Uh, they can be used to aim a crossbow for ranges outside of lock-on range. So if you're going to use a crossbow, they are pretty useful in PvE. In other words, player versus environment. So if you're looking to take on bosses, or you're look well, specifically Beta Chaos, or you're trying to pull enemies from far away, or even just kill them from far away, say outside of aggro range, especially with, say, a Ring of Fog or Hidden Body, the uh, binoculars can help the crossbow out a lot. And yes, with uh, 16 strength, you can uh, two-hand this way. You cannot one-hand it unless you have 24. But I like its two-handed moves better for the most part anyway. And here I'm testing out if I have mid-roll or fast roll. And unfortunately, I, I'm mid-rolling even with a piece of helmet on with my current endurance. So I'm going to have to go naked other than the sword. And that does allow me to fast roll. Uh, <laughs> I actually don't mind mid-rolling. But especially for the earlier areas, I just wanted to be able to move around a little bit more quickly. I'm not fighting anything. And I guess I could have just not equipped this way. I don't know. It, it doesn't really matter. So, <laughs> I just run around naked with a big sword, I guess. <laughs> uh, bad puns. Not puns. Bad jokes, in general. Uh, YouTube and it's uh, quote-unquote subtle dick jokes. Well, moving on anyway. I've taken just enough stats to let me use this weapon. I know it's overdone, but hey, we're talking about a cheesing run where we're going to make a playthrough of the game easy. Now, there are builds where you really don't want to put the points into strength to use this way. If you're like looking for a sheer katana build on the katanas that don't use 16 strength, you probably don't want to take any points in strength. Uh, dexterity with pyromancy with something like a rapier, again, probably don't want this way. You can use like the reinforced club and two-handed or something, or really anything. <laughs> Early parts of this game aren't hard if you play it the way I'm playing it. So you'll see. But for any strength build, this way is a good choice for running through the game. And for any quality build, in other words, if you're leveling both strength and dexterity to get maximum weapon scaling from a plus 15 weapon upgrade path, 
which is the highest damage you can do. Either of those are good options uh, to use as way. And obviously, if you're going intelligence, but you're using something like the Moonlight Greatsword, again, you might actually be able to use this anyway. Yeah, easy shot there. Let's just run around this guy. I don't want to bother with that kind of nonsense. We're already up to the Taurus Demon. I want to get rid of the crossbow guys at the top here before I go into the actual boss fight. Now, the Zwei is... Why is the Zwei good in player versus environment? Well, it has the Ultra Great Sword Stagger. <laughs> that's, that's, I think that's one of the bigger things. It does a lot of damage per swing, although its overall DPS isn't great compared to some things, like especially buff builds, because in, in individual swings, pretty slow. But if you only have time for one swing anyway, or you're fighting something that can be staggered with either your two-handed R1 or two-handed R2, then suddenly it's a very powerful weapon. But it's also useful in this fight just because, as you'll see, it's plunging attack. It hits like a truck on the Taurus Demon. And uh, although I'm not going to be showing any New Game Plus stuff aside from uh, PvP, um, I did run through some PV. Uh, I, I, you know, I did run through some of the New Game Plus. And a maxed out Zwei of any elemental plus uh, power within, you will one shot a new game plus Taurus Demon with a plunging attack. So, nice and simple. As for Taurus, um, his attacks are really slow, so you can literally just like bait an attack from him and stay out of range and then run in and hit him with a running attack from pretty much any weapon in the game and then run away again. So, you don't have to do a plunging attack on him. But this is probably the easiest way to fight him. And, well, we're going easy. <laughs> or as easy mode as this game allows. And that's the Taurus Demon. Even faster than the first time I fought him, because I have a bigger weapon. Gotta have the big swords. Yes, indeed. Just something about my character model just makes a big sword even more endearing, doesn't it? <sighs> Alright. Onward and upward. I'm going to pick up the white soapstone sign from Solaire, might as well. You can actually prevent him from advancing his quest line by getting the white soapstone, but then not letting him finish what he's saying. <laughs> He'll just stay here for the entire game. And uh, I actually opt to do that. I don't know. I, I don't like um, I, I don't like the paths that where you can go where he dies, essentially. I like Solaire, so I'm going to keep him alive by leaving him there forever. <laughs> it's actually possible, because I'm doing this, it's possible to not do the shortcut that would normally be required to save him and still save him by making him stuck earlier in his quest line. In other words, their uh, very late game area, Lost Izalith, if you go into there, Advancing Solaris uh, path normally And yeah here. I'm going to level up uh, endurance a bit endurance is really the most important stat for me early on But anyway if you if you go there normally he'll become hollow and attack you you can kill him for his equipment and whatnot Now here I have a good look at my stats for some reason Oh, I guess I was evaluating if I could put on any clothing or not, but I apparently decided I couldn't yet but if you don't advance his uh, quest log, or his quest path at all, you can actually go into Lost Isolith and open up the shortcut from the opposite side, even without being in the Covenant that you would normally need to do it, and uh, kill the Chaos Bug that would otherwise cause him to go hollow. <laughs> and you can save him. It's actually possible. The only thing is you won't be able to summon him for the Centipede Demon fight. And I'm not sure if you'll be able to summon uh, him for Gwen either. And I whiff horribly here. Not that I really care about the Drake Sword. I like what I'm carrying better already. But that is one way to get the Drake Sword, is to run up and just hack its tail off. And the 16 strength requirement is pretty good for, uh, for, for both this way and for the Drake Sword. Because you, I think you need 16 strength to wield it. And what the heck am I doing? <laughs> just take the level. Oi. Okay. Here again, I guess I'm hesitating. Oh no, I guess I did get enough endurance to be able to, to equip some things. I just didn't bother. And yeah, I, I did the math, you know, pro math, 
12 plus 3 is equal to 15, and so I needed something 3 equip weight or less, or otherwise I wouldn't be able to fast roll. Actually, it was a little bit less than that, because I don't think I have an equip weight of 60 yet. Smooth. Look at that, you just swing into them and it knocks their shield out of the way. <laughs> That's actually doable with hammers as well. I, I guess they don't do very well with the 50 poise break either. I would look up if you're not sure and you're interested in this game. I would look up the poise break points. Because that gives you a good idea of how much stagger each of the weapons do on hit. And you do more stagger with a two-handed attack than a one-handed attack. But that also uh, affects how well you can hammer through shields and drain stamina on blocking. Of course the shield stability has an impact on that as well. The heavier shield with higher stability will drain less stamina to block. And oh man, playing a little fast and loose with the dodging there. Uh, one thing I'll say right now is that if you are running and blocking, you've been blocking for more than a minute or uh, not a minute, if you've been blocking for a couple seconds, in other words, if you don't just hit block and then jump, uh, you will roll. You will not jump. And that is useful because a lot of times if you're trying to run through enemies and roll through things, but you're running and you hit like circle or you hit B, you're going to do a jump and that's going to get you hit. <laughs> and also in PvP, if you are using dark, like if you're trying to roll through dark beads, one of the easiest ways to get yourself killed, or any magic really, is to, <laughs> instead of rolling, jump into the air <laughs> and uh, basically eat the entire attack. That's not very good. But if you're blocking, that doesn't happen that way. So. That's something to keep in mind. It's good in both PvE and PvP if you're trying to roll through attacks while running. And sometimes that comes up in both. So, okay. Where to go from here? Interestingly, I haven't used the black fire bombs yet. I was thinking maybe that I would just run to the gargoyles and kill them with black fire bombs without summoning. But then I thought better of it. I thought of an even easier way to approach this. So I'm going to uh, reverse hollowing here and kindle. Might as well kindle. Get to uh, 10 Estus flask usages. I suppose I could have gone down to the new Londo ruins and picked up that Firekeeper soul right at the start of the game and homeward boned out. I would recommend doing that if you can because it's powers up your Estus early and you're going to have to do it sometime if you want to improve your Estus flask. You don't lose that much time doing it earlier rather than later. And here, as you can tell, although I've done it a little while ago already, I switched to the Halberd. The Halberd, I, I did a test run that I also recorded that I, I really didn't like uh, how I played through it. And this, that's why I re-recorded, and that's why this took even longer to get started. And the Halberd was my primary weapon, and I still like it a lot. It can stun lock in PvP, although it only has 30 poise break, so you're not going to stun lock people easily unless you can get two hits with it against, say, less than 61 poise. But it can stun lock if two-handed. It also has great range. It can pick up bonuses from the Leo ring on counterattacks. It's a very good weapon, no matter how you slice it. It also has some dead angle potential with its R2s. It's probably not as popular as the Great Scythe, and it is more of a quality weapon, where some of the other scythes are, um, well, straight dex weapons. And man, no... No moss drops at all. It's kind of disappointing. But I like it as a weapon a lot, and it is a great PvE weapon. Uh, you can easily run the game, the entire game, with, like, even a raw upgrade path, Halberd. And you just buff it with like a lightning resin or something against four kings. Or even just use power within and don't bother buffing it at all. It's really a strong weapon in terms of base damage and it gets good scaling. But I'm not going to be worrying about scaling for this playthrough. Because until you have your stats maxed, um, you really don't get as much damage as an elemental weapon early on. Now, what's max scaling? Well, uh, for dexterity it's about 40, and for strength it's either 27 or 40. The way strength works is if you two-hand a weapon, you get a 50% strength bonus on it. 
that allow you to that allows you to use weapons with two hands that you couldn't otherwise if you have enough strength to at least two hand it and get the 50% bonus. But that also affects your scaling. After 40, you get very little in terms of attack rating on scaling weapons, even if you go all the way up to 99. Like you get almost nothing from 40 to 99. So that's where your scaling stops. Uh, the only thing is with dexterity. Dexterity will improve your casting speed up until a dexterity of 45. So if you're going heavy on casting, especially heavy on casting pyromancies, you might take dexterity up to 45. But otherwise, you're looking at 40 for your top scaling. And yeah, I'm just going to run by this noise because I don't have enough damage to deal with those guys right now. I came here specifically for the wolf ring. It's one of the better rings in the game. Um, use, I used it in the PvP video I posted recently. It hands you 40 poise. Uh, essentially, like, a couple of reasonably heavy pieces of equipment. Like, wearing two decently heavy pieces of equipment. It'll allow you to take one two-handed uh, R2 attack without being staggered from... Or, or well, one two-handed R1 for most weapons. The exception are things like uh, great ultra great swords, great swords, hammers... And, um, well, obviously, great hammers. <laughs> Things like that. Uh, and also, uh, did I say great swords? I think I might have. Yeah, anyway, it, those things do 50 poise or more. The hammers are a really good weapon class, and part of me wanted to do a hammer run. Uh, just to showcase it, and scale up the strength. Because with you, if you two-hand at 27 strength, you can do lots of damage with things like maces and reinforced clubs. And then, all right, I gotta... <laughs> I, I grabbed the Elite Knight set there. For fun, summon Witch Beatrice. And, uh, you know, I loaded the horde here. And kind of got myself killed. Lovely. Lovely. <laughs> Witch Beatrice still shows up. So that's one death. I'm actually going to leave all my deaths in for this run. Uh, I've, I've managed to get to the point where I don't suck so much that they're going to detract too much, I don't think. Um, maybe in the future I'll edit out. I still have some things to say for this video, so I, I guess I'll <laughs> show me running past there again. And also, I'm going to do a true run by. I'm not going to stop for anything. So getting to the Moonlight Butterfly will be relatively quick. Also, there is a hidden bonfire. I'm not sure if I showed it in my first playthrough or not, because I'm not sure if I bothered going down into the forest in any capacity in that playthrough. I don't remember. But it's right near that uh, crest door. You just roll through and or attack the hidden wall and you'll see it. I'll showcase it later on in the playthrough. But the reason I didn't use it is I want to be able to homeward bone back to the Undead Parish. Now, in retrospect, I would have done equal time savings had I uh, just used the safety bonfire, but I assumed I wasn't going to die. And normally I don't in this kind of area, so yeah, that, that kind of sucks. I wasn't expecting to have all that stuff follow me. I really didn't need the Elite Knight stuff, but I wanted to wear it eventually, so I picked it up. And that cost me. I guess I could have um, run further up to reset the aggro. A lot of the stuff would have stopped following me. Definitely the, um, the 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 giant statue guys would not have followed me because uh, they don't go up the stairs. <laughs> so I would have been able to take care of the trees and then finagle my way. But I decided to try and quickly summon Witch Beatrice and apparently I didn't have the time. But this time I'm not worrying about that. I'm just going straight to the boss and well, summoning Witch Beatrice along the way. Now, as you can see, it's possible to run past that stone guardian, and he's just standing there. He's not aggroed on me. But Witch Beatrice will not follow you up without attacking him, so I might as well stay down here and make sure she doesn't get destroyed. Pointlessly bowing to NPCs. I will not be summoning any player characters for this. I want it to be something that you can do completely in offline mode. Yeah, she can just one-shot the guy. But, you know, I don't want her to aggro him first and then miss and then take damage. No point. I'll just let her shoot him. But yeah, I, I'm showing how to do this game easily but without summoning people. Because if you summon people who are like overpowering, anything is going to be easy in the game. But this is stuff that you can always do. You always have available to you. You don't need help from anyone else to manage it. 
uh, if you're playing through the game yourself, and especially if you like the PvP aspects, by all means, summon human help too. But these NPCs uh, in certain spots in the game can really help. So okay, we're to our first boss after Taurus Demon. And it's an easy one. You don't have to come here early, but it, as long as you're in human form and summon Witch Beatrice, this is one of the easiest fights in the game. You really don't have to try at all. Uh, if it's hitting you, you can block. I, I, the only thing that I would really recommend blocking are these fast sharding attacks that it's doing right now. Uh, any of its other attacks, I would recommend dodging them. It's easy enough to do even if you're mid-rolling. I think you could even fat roll through the other attacks aside from that. Although, if you're fat rolling, you probably have a better shield that can block more things. Anyway, I wasn't doing much damage, and really, Witch Beatrice will take care of your damage here. She has very powerful spells for this time in the game, and can just hammer on the Moonlight Butterfly, so nothing to worry about. Yeah, you want to stay mostly in front of the Moonlight Butterfly, because it lets you dodge most of its attacks more easily. And for pretty much everything in PvE and Dark Souls, you want to roll towards the direction the swing is coming from, or an attack. In that case, you saw me strafing right and then rolling left because the attacks were going right to left, for, or they were going from the left side towards the right side. Anytime an enemy is starting to swing, you want to swing toward, you want to roll towards the direction they are swinging from. In other words, roll into the swing, as it were. That gives you a much more consistent ability to dodge the attacks. It's possible to dodge attacks rolling in the same direction as the swing, but your timing window for it is much smaller, and you're likely to take a hit, and that sucks. So, okay. Uh, pointlessly used the halberd, but I thought it was a more effective way of dealing with the uh, uh, Ents, unless you can one-shot them with this way. But, you know, a level zero's way, you really can't do that. So why did I fight Moonlight Butterfly first? In addition to it being easy, it lets me pick up the shards I need. <laughs> Hurrah! No, it lets me pick up the, the shards I need via souls to uh, upgrade a weapon to plus five. In this case, it's going to be this way, obviously, but you can do this with anything. <laughs> And you really don't need any weapon at all to beat the Moonlight Butterfly. If you want, you can just stand there, and the fight will look very much like I did. I actually considered, even at this point, I like the Halberd a lot. I almost decided to make this a Halberd run. I came very close. As you can see, this is uh, this is real time me weighing between how I, the game is going to play out if I use one versus the other. Um, it, it, there are some things that are easier or harder depending on your choice. Because this way it does have a sl has slightly less range than a two-handed halberd attack, and on top of that, it's a little bit um, fat. The the halberd's a little bit faster, so you there's some things you can do with it that you couldn't otherwise. And yeah, I'm still good on equip weight here. So we're going to continue to the gargoyles all in one video. Why not? Well, we are looking at over half hour here, but that's fine. It's fine. I never did like splitting videos too short. It's a bit of a pain to do that. <laughs> I think somewhere in the 20 to 40 minute range is probably my ideal. Although I think most people prefer like the 20 to 30 minute window. After that you start to lose engagement. So this video is going a little long. And for those that I kind of lost myself and uh, went way too long in the future. I'll probably split them into two parts. But for the most part, I'll try to stick somewhere in the 20 to, to, thir to 35, 40 minute range. All right, this guy is not staggered very easily, as you can see. <laughs> I thought I could stagger him with a two-handed R2, but I couldn't. But I do with a plus five's way do enough damage to kill him in two hits with it, so I, did, I wasn't worried about the second attack. But I did eat an attack there. And, yeah, those maces, man, <laughs> they, they stagger you. Alright, grab Firekeeper Soul. No big deal there. Uh, that's the first one that most people pick up, and it's, uh, you know, you kind of need to kill that knight. Well, you don't need to, but it's very difficult to get through the level without doing it, so you might as well. Pancake! I love pancaking enemies. <laughs> so you might as well pick it up. Reinforce the Estus Flask. And yes, I switched uh, back to naked mode, but with a shield. And that's so that I can get through this area more easily. 
I'll show how. This is the most standard way to easily run past this area. You need to block for a second because if you don't, the hollow that's in the doorway will obstruct you. What the heck am I doing? I'm hitting the wrong button. But uh, yeah, the hollow in that doorway will obstruct you and um, then you get stuck and you get attacked by all the boosted guys behind you and you die. So if you block like that, you don't die. Instead, you can just run through. Summoning Solaire for this fight uh, rather than using Black Fire Bombs. So basically, I took Black Fire Bombs for nothing. But I did not want to take the Master Key. I think it's an overrated starting gift. And I'll show why soon enough. But, um... Yeah. <laughs> Any other starting gift? Well, none of the starting gifts are all, all that impressive, honestly. And I don't know what Solaire's doing, aside from kicking Hollows down. But I'm just gonna go in. I already have the means to get to Havel if I want to. And pick up that ring. Or Havel's Disciple or whatever. So I don't need to worry about that. And uh, there's a good way to get to Blight Town, or Lower Blight Town, even without the Master Key skipping the depths. So the Master Key, while helpful in a couple areas aside from that, those are the two biggies, and you don't need it for either of them. Not the best start to the fight here, but uh, hopefully I can recover from that. Messed up my roll timing and whiff. That's great. Whap. Yeah. See, this is one of the reasons this way is really good in PvE, and that'll stay true in new game iterations as well. It has tremendous ability to stagger things. And so, like, I staggered that guy, and uh, he can't attack any longer. And that happens a reasonable amount, or a lot of bosses can be staggered in two hits uh, from the R1. And when you can do that, oh man, I ran clean into the fire. When you can do that, it actually makes a lot of boss fights considerably easier. Yeah, I'm just gonna stand here and let this thing spit fire at me. Now, the reason you summon Solaire here, and it's kind of a cheesy thing to do, and you really don't need anything else, is that Solaire can solo a guard very easily. So all you really need to do is distract the other one and, and kind of, sort of, effectively fight one gargoyle. You don't even need to necessarily do all that well. And you'll win the fight, at least in regular new game, against the guard. And yeah, he, uh, he's still in pretty good shape, even. Man, he's got lightning spears and everything for this point of the game. It's incredible. <laughs> Another thing you can do is instead of using this way, you can pick up the light cr light crossbow in the undead burg. It's pretty easy to get it. You just run past the merchant there. And uh, jump down to it. Upgrade that to plus five. And you can pretty well stay out of harm's way and just shoot things. And that will take you through much of the early game. In fact, you can run most of the game trivially with a crossbow. The only thing that gave me pause on doing that is my quote unquote cheesing run. Is that the. There's a certain boss, namely the Four Kings, that really requires you to do damage to them quickly. And I think it would be difficult to do that with a crossbow. Maybe, um, maybe with power within, and uh, like a crossbow plus 15 with heavy bolts, you could probably do it. But it's, um, uh, it stops being easy then. <laughs> so it's a bit of a pick your poison type of scenario, I suppose. Stocking up on indictments? How honorable. <laughs> I, I have to listen to him say that every time. That is just so awesome. <laughs> How honorable. <laughs> Can't hit through the walls. I don't like that things can hit you through the walls. And usually you can't hit other things through walls either, but this time I could. Another benefit of running up here, even if you don't have a summon, is that enemies are going to single file you pretty easily. Yeah, there's there's really nothing they can do. You can hit them coming up the ladder. And uh, ladders tend to ruin gankers days in PvP as well if you can get to them. Obviously we can combine things like Fire Tempest it gets even worse. But yeah, that actually turned out to be a trivial way to kill that guy. Just walk up and two-hand him with, a <laughs> with an R2 at a plus 5 and that's enough to kill him already. 
And down to go to Firelink Shrine. I want to quickly grab the Ring of Favor and Protection before I do anything else. I also don't want to... Um, I don't want Latrek killing the Firekeeper at, at Firelink, so... We're going to kill two birds with one stone here and pick this up. This is also not a bad time to go back to the Undead Asylum and uh, fight the Stray Demon if you're up to it. But I didn't feel like it because this is a cheesing run. And while that's relatively easy once you're used to Stray Demon, this is probably a little early in the game for most people to try it. <laughs> I didn't even free him. I guess I could have, but I didn't go the path that would let me get the key to do it. Kick. See ya! Alright, so that'll take care of this part, viewers. I hope you're enjoying it. I will see you in the next one. The Mean Team, signing off.